Hey, it's John Hal here, and I've got an amazing training for you today. So make sure you watch this entire training through, take notes, and start to implement it today in your trading. So at the end of this video, if you love what you see, then make sure you click on that button below that's just appeared to grab your free trial to the Master Trader Lab Monthly. I'm running a very short time frame on a, on a, on a free trial. And now in the Master Trader Lab Monthly, every single month I release brand new trainings just like the one you're seeing right now. Every month I do a live session, market updates, answer your questions, and also you get to join our Master Trader Lab Mastermind as well too, where everyone is in their collective as well too. So brand new trainings every month, live sessions, mastermind, plus you get about six different courses, over $5,000 worth of courses as well too, instant access, and I'm allowing, I'm doing a special right now, where you can actually get a free trial to it to test it out. So watch this entire training all the way through, and if you enjoyed it, then click on the button below right now and go grab your free trial, because I'm only doing this as a bit of a short term, short term thing, so go do that right now. Watch this video, then check out the free trial, and I look forward to seeing you inside. Don't place a trade based on what you're seeing in this video because there is no guarantees of making a profit in the market. It takes you a long time to become a good trader. So this video here is just to educate you to become a much better trader. Hey traders, John Hal here. And in this free training, you're going to learn one of the most simple but powerful chart reading and also trading techniques that I've used personally over the last 15 years of trading the markets. And it's so powerful that it works on any market at any time frame. And in fact, in this training you're going to see today, I'm going to walk you back through to the 1950s. That's how long it's actually been working and how the actual markets work. You're going to absolutely love this. You can start to incorporate this today. Okay, so in this section, uh, we are going to talk about the most important tool that you can use to understand understanding what's going on in the market right now. And the most important thing and the number one thing um, that I personally use is what we call peaks and troughs and also understanding how they work in the overall markets, okay? So you see, when, actually, when watching the peaks and troughs on the chart, they'll tell you if buyers are in control or sellers are in control or no one is in control. You see, the reason why this is important is because whenever we're trying to understand what's going on in the market, a lot of people say, are buyers in control? Are sellers in control? Or is no one in control? We're trying to, as traders, we're trying to get a good feel of who is in control of the overall market, right? So when we're doing that, we need to be using simple tools that we can identify really quickly within a few minutes or so of saying, okay, who is in control of this market? Because if buyers are in control, we don't want to be shorting it or selling it, right? Meaning we want the market to go down. Or if the sellers are in control, we don't want to be uh, buying it, right? Because if the sellers are in control, well, therefore the sellers are likely to keep continuing at that time anyway. So the overall importance of this is identifying the peaks and troughs on the chart and, a note, and, and understanding how they actually work uh, within the market. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about here. Now, I promise you that if all you take away is this peaks and troughs and you go apply this and you study it and analyze it, you'll start to see patterns and you'll start to see the way the market works and you'll start to identify these peaks and troughs in the markets and you'll start to realize that there's more of an art, there's more of an art and there's more of a, a backing behind these charts than what most people think. See, most people think they can just add a few indicators and then that's it, right? But when you start to really analyze the price action, because remember, price action is king. When you start to analyze the price action and understand what's going on with the price action, then everything will change within your trading because you are identifying peaks and troughs, which is the most important thing because they tell you ultimately at the end of the day, who is in control. And yes, there are times where the buyers are in control and the sellers are in control or no one is in control. And we're actually gonna go through examples and show you exactly what that looks like as well, okay? So let's actually get into the details of how peaks and troughs work and let's move forward with that. So the first thing we're gonna talk about is um, if we have an uptrend, um, then we have buyers in control, right? So it's pretty simple. Market's moving up. We have a uptrend and now we have buyers in control. So let's have a look at this here. Let's just say the market ran up. Okay, so the market ran up and then it found a bit of a point where it sort of found a bit of resistance there and, and, the, and the market what we call equalized, okay? And then we had a pullback. This is known as a peak, okay? And then something what happens is the market sort of uh, has a small pullback and then comes up, buyers come back in and push it all the way back up and then it forms a trough, okay? So you've got now the peak and now you've got the trough. The market runs up, it equalizes again, 
okay? And then it has a small little pullback. What is now created? It's created now a peak. Now remember, this could be a weekly chart, this could be a daily chart, this could be any chart. And so I'll get I'll get to in the in the next module. You're going to learn about more about the advanced peaks and troughs. But for now, let's actually just stick with this. So the market runs up, and now we've created the trough. So as you can see, as the market makes peaks and troughs, it runs up, makes a peak, comes down, makes a trough, and then equalizes at the top again, pulls back. It's now created a another higher peak, and then the market runs up, and now it's created the trough. So as you can see, that just by identifying this. What do we have here? We have simple analysis to identify what is going on in the market right now. We have peaks higher and troughs higher. So if the market is moving and the markets are, if you look, if you're identifying higher troughs and higher peaks, then that simply tells you that the buyers are in control. Okay, the buyers are in control, and so. If the buyers are in control, which one do you think would be more high probability to do? Would it be to buy it or short it, meaning sell it? Meaning you want the market to go down. And the more high probability, right, would be to buy it. Why? Because the buyers are in control. Yes, we have small little pullbacks, okay, but the ultimate error is the length is on the upside. We're getting higher peaks, high troughs, the buyers keep pushing it up, and so therefore, we want to be staying on the buy side. Let's now go have a look at a um, at a downtrend. At a downtrend, many sellers in control. Okay, and uh, we, you're going to see the the, the the complete shift now. What do we have? The market runs down, and it runs back up, and you can see it's now created a trough. Then when it it runs back, it runs it sort of equalizes through there, finds a bit of support, and then runs back down. It creates a peak. Right, and then the market sort of pulls back up again. Okay, and now you can see we're stair stepping down slowly. Right, what what comes next? We equalize. We find the the low point, which is like the support point, and then we create a lower trough, and then the market breaks through, and then that now creates a lower peak. The market breaks back up. Okay, creates a lower trough. That's now the support level. It breaks past the support level, and now forms a lower peak. So as you can see here right now, that if the peaks are lower and the troughs are lower, then we have sellers in control. And if sellers are in control, then we then the most highest probability entry levels would be would be selling the market, meaning shorting the market, wanting the market to fall to make a profit, okay? Or using strategies around the market that benefit from the market falling. So we have Peaks and troughs on a downtrend. If the market is stair stepping lower, where and we have lower peaks and lower troughs, then we are looking at the sellers being in control, and therefore the most highest probability entries would be a, would be looking to benefit from shorting the market, okay, or benefit from the mar having strategies that are benefit from the market moving down. So if we have higher peaks and higher troughs. Then we have buyers in control, and if we have uh, lower peaks and lower troughs, then we have sellers in control. Okay, and this is how the market works and has done ever since it started. And this is the reason why it's so important. If you're watching the forex market, the futures market, the e-mini market, the the stock market, whatever market you're looking at, the reason why this is so important for you to learn and continue to learn and continue to use on a day-to-day -day basis. Is because this is how the market works. Okay, if you look way, way, way back, ever since the market started, then this is how the market works. Okay, and let's have a look at this here. What we're looking at right now is a chart that was way back, going back to 1950s. You can see down the bottom there. Okay, 1954 to be exact, the year I went all the way back. But even on, even in 1954, look at this. We have a trough. We have a peak. We have a trough. We have another higher peak, we have another higher trough, a higher peak, a higher trough, and so on and so forth, right? You can see there's another trough, there's another peak there, okay? We have another, another higher peak there, and let's just go back to that slide there. So as you can see, right, we're looking at a chart that was taken back in 1950s, okay, 1954. And the market is going to give you different peaks and troughs 
and it's going to show you who's in control. So as you can see here, the market's stair stepping higher and it's giving you higher peaks and higher troughs. So therefore, buyers are in control when looking at this uh, chart here. Now, this chart was taken as of today, as I'm doing this recording for you. Um, this was actually taken. This was actually um, taken just recently. Okay, and as you can see, once again, we have a trough, we have a peak, we have a trough, a peak, and as you can see, we have higher troughs, higher peak, higher trough. We have a higher peak, and we have a higher trough. Now another higher peak and a higher trough. So as you can see, back in 1950s, the market makes peaks and troughs. Back and right now, the market makes peaks and troughs. And if you look at any chart out there, that's all the chart does is makes peaks and troughs. Okay. So by understanding this one simple tool, you can start to identify even on a small scale, meaning on the daily chart, you can start to identify who's in control. Now, uh, when actually viewing the actual chart itself, we need to be identifying um, there's two levels of peaks and troughs that we need to be keeping an eye on for. One, the weekly chart, and two, the daily chart. So let's actually go over to the actual live chart itself right now, and we'll actually talk more about that. Okay, so now we're looking at a simple chart here, okay? And this could be a index chart, this could be a stock chart, this could be a future chart, whatever, okay? It doesn't matter. So when actually looking at the uh, the chart itself, what we're looking at right now is we're looking at a daily chart, okay? So that simply means that every single one of these bars here is simply a daily bar, okay? Daily bar. And remember, we're looking at different peaks and troughs. So if we're looking at different peaks and troughs, we can actually see, what do we have here? Let's actually go from the start here. We have a peak, an equal peak, right? A trough, a lower trough, a lower peak, a lower trough, a lower peak. So who's in control here? Sellers, right? Because now we've got lower peaks and lower troughs. Market runs down, comes down here, creates a trough, okay? Comes back up and creates about a bit, a bit of a peak through there, pulls back down, now creates a high trough, comes back up, creates a peak, okay, comes back down, creates a trough, comes back up, creates a peak, comes back down, creates a lower trough, then comes back up and creates a higher peak. Now, who's in control through this period through here? The buyers, right? Now, even though we've got this lower trough through here, that was an indication which we're going to talk about in future modules uh, about that was an indication that the sellers might be coming in control okay but it didn't and the market ran back up and now formed a higher peak okay and now we've just been scooting to the high side in this particular um, chart here now as you can see when the stocks going when the stocks making equal peaks and equal troughs it's going sideways okay and as it's making lower peaks and lower troughs it's going down and if that's making higher peaks and higher troughs, it's going up. So therefore, we're now moving to the high side and stair stepping up to the high side. So we're looking at a daily chart right now, okay? And so what I like to do personally is I personally like to go to the weekly chart because on the daily chart, if I just squeeze this chart up a bit more, let me just squeeze this chart a bit more, you can see there's a lot of different peaks and troughs. And yes, while they can give you good indication, like look at this here, we have a trough, a peak, trough, peak, trough, high peak, high trough, high peak, high trough. Look at the peaks and troughs, right? Clearly telling you who's in control. So, yes, there's a lot of peaks and troughs, but in an overall nutshell, whenever we're trading, we want to have a look at the small picture and we have a look at the big picture. So let's actually go, what, what do I mean by that? Well, the small picture is what we're looking at right now, which is a daily chart, okay? Looking at what's happening for the last, say, couple of months. But... What we need to be doing is we need to be going back to the weekly chart, which we're going to go over to the weekly chart now, okay? And we need to be identifying major. Now, we're looking at major now, okay? So before, we're looking at the little, small, little little swings on the, on the daily chart. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to be looking at the major peaks and troughs. So let's have a look at this here, okay? We can see down the bottom here, we see we have this major low point through here. It's called that a trough. Market runs back up creates a peak, market runs back down, comes back up, now creates a trough. Who's in control? Buyers, right? Market runs back up, creates a major higher peak, comes back down, creates a major higher trough, comes back up, creates a major higher peak, 
comes back down, creates a major higher trough. We'll talk more about these swings a bit later on as well too and how you can identify these as well too, okay? Identify uh, where we're likely to pause, okay? So peak and a trough, and now we're still running up. So we, we haven't made a peak yet, have we? We've just sort of, we're still going up. So we haven't really had this downward movement yet. So we can't really call that a peak. So we're still running to the high side. But as you can see, by identifying the weekly chart, now we're looking at probably, we're looking at a couple of years worth of data on this chart now, okay? And what we're looking at right now is we're looking at the overall major peaks and troughs. See, what's going to happen is this. Whenever we train a daily chart, it can be very messy and there's going to be a lot of different peaks and troughs, right? What we need to be doing is we need to be keeping it, keeping in the back of our mind where is the major trend going and that's by, uh, and we need to be sticking with that major trend, right? So right now, what, what we have here is we have a weekly chart and we've identified the major peaks and major troughs on the weekly chart, okay? Let's actually just sc screen this up a bit more, okay? And let's just open this up a bit more. As we can see, it happens on a big downtrend as well. Let me just open this up so you can get a good clear picture of this. And as you can see, on a downtrend, we have a peak. We have a peak. We have a trough. We have a peak. Okay, come down. When sideways came down, that was the trough there. That was the major trough. Okay, came up, made a major high peak. Came down, made a major high trough. I made a lower trough, should I say? Made a lower peak, came down, made a trough, came up, made a peak, came down, made a trough. So as we can see, right, even on a downtrend, lower peaks, okay, okay, so lower peak, lower peak, lower peak, lower trough, lower trough, lower trough. You can see the sellers are stair stepping this down. And so the overall momentum at this period of time is the sellers are in control of this one. Okay, so what we need to be doing in a nutshell is we need to be keeping an eye on the bigger picture and then we need to be looking at the daily chart to identify peaks and troughs as well. Okay, so what we've done here is we've identified, okay, overall on a major, on a longer term scale, the bigger picture, okay, because as you know, whenever we're trading, there can be peaks and troughs on the, the daily chart can give you a lot of different peaks and troughs. The weekly chart is much more cleaner, okay? It's going to give you the bigger picture of what's really going on. Trough, peak, trough, peak, trough, a high peak, a high trough, right? So it's going to give you a good, clear picture of that the buyers are massively in control here. And even if we do get a small little pullback through here on this particular chart, then what's likely to happen is the like the buyers are likely to come in the buyers are likely to come in control because we're just stair stepping right we're going with the overall momentum we're stair stepping up and then pull back we're stair stepping up and then we pull back and we're stair stepping up and then we pull back make sense so that's why that's what's actually expected with the overall market but when we're looking at the daily chart let's go back to the we're looking at the weekly chart now let's go to the daily chart you can actually see in the last couple of months there's a lot of there's a lot more messier peaks and troughs, right? So if we if we were looking at a weekly chart, we would say this was the peak, uh, sorry, this was the trough, and this was the peak up here. But what we're looking at right now is we're looking at a daily chart. So the daily chart has a lot of different peaks and troughs within, within, within the daily chart now, as you can see. Make sense? So the weekly chart was just saying these uh, sort of uh, pink, purpley circles. They're the weekly chart peaks and troughs, but the daily chart has a lot of different peaks and troughs in it. But it's important as we do our analysis that we always keep our big picture in mind, right? Because as you know, that it's the big guys that really push this market around. It's not us little guys trading the markets. So we need to keep an eye on what those big guys are doing and how you understand what they're doing is by looking at the peaks and troughs. Are they buying it up or are they selling it down? And by looking at peaks and troughs in the weekly chart, we get a good clear picture of what's going on. And then what happens is then we can look on the daily chart to fine tune um, by looking on the daily chart and fine tune uh, what we what we call the um, the art of peaks and troughs. By by looking at the different peaks and troughs on the daily chart, we can now um, possibly use these as entry signals if you wanted to. But don't just trade off peaks and troughs. Use other things as well too, and other things you'll be learning. You'll be learning about different systems and methods within this package here as well too that you got. Okay, so that is the end of this tutorial about peaks and troughs. You can see that. 
um, for something simple. I've spent a bit of time, almost 20 minutes now, I've talked about peaks and troughs. And now I hope you get a good understanding of why peaks and troughs are important because they actually tell you what's really going on in the market. And sometimes even myself, I can completely forget the importance of just looking at the peaks and troughs and seeing what is really going on. Okay, so at the end of the day, the, the, the daily chart can be very, very messy. So I say start with the weekly chart first, okay? Get a good clear picture of who's in control and then only and then only start to use those peaks and troughs and only start to be trading in the trend that really is in, in line with that, okay? So the weekly chart there, trading in the trend of the weekly chart, but then also keep it in mind, if you are trading against the overall big long-term trend on the weekly chart, just keep in mind that that, that trend could be short-lived. As you can see, right, the overall major trend is up. So if you want, if you wanted to be benefit from a down market through here, the 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 down mark, the down period through here is short lived. The best periods are the long periods, right? Long period, long periods, long long periods, long periods. Make sense? And how you identify the best periods, and long periods, is because you're looking at the peaks and troughs.